Hey, y'all, you've just tuned in to What's Cooking with Paula Dean. And I just wanted to uh, share how to make an incredible steak with y'all. Um, I'm going to show you some scenes from Positively Paula where we did steaks three ways. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to do things. But I want to show y'all this and tell me what you think about it. I really want you to try doing this. And then I want to hear from you. Okay, let's roll them. Hey, friends, y'all come on in. You know what today's show is about? I get in a rut. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Where you do things the same way every time. Well, guess what? Today's show is all about options. We all need them. And uh, to break the monotony, they're fun to do. And you know, my team and I are constantly looking to see what other people are doing. Well, we came up on this new way to cook steak. And I found it to be very, very interesting. And you know how I get teased all the time because I love bacon and I love butter and you know, all the condiments. Well, <laughs> we've got a couple of beautiful fillets here and we are gonna cook them on like a, a bacon basket that we've latticed. So I'm starting with four pieces of bacon, y'all. We're going to do this just like we would for the top of my pot pie, for my chicken pot pie. So we're going to pick up two, lay this strip of bacon down, lay that back over it, and then pick up these two, lay these right here, and you just go back and forth until you've got your latticed bacon <laughs> pie shell. <laughs> All right, now this is the tricky part, is transferring it to your baking sheet. These are beautiful filet mignons, y'all, that uh, are gonna be delicious. And there we go. I'm gonna scoot that down a little because we got one more steak to put on this pan. So, now the next steak we're gonna do is this gorgeous ribeye. And this is gonna be a sweet and sour ribeye. So, I've got a bowl here that has sugar, salt, and pepper mixed together. So I'm just gonna kinda coat this good. And that sugar is gonna help this steak caramelize. All right, so there, it's gonna go on the rack. Like I said, 200 degree oven. We've got our filet mignon that's just uh, gonna be bathing in a little bacon fat. <laughs> and then we've got our sugar-coated ribeye. And we have a fabulous like sweet and sour sauce to go on it after it's done cooking. So we're gonna get these cooked, gonna throw them in the oven, and then when they reach 120 or 125, we're gonna take them out and let them rest. So here we go. And I got a bunch of good stuff back here, y'all, to go along with these steaks. I've got portobello mushrooms, I got caramelized onion, and I cooked an onion. Oh my goodness, this kinda leaked. I've got um, like a bouillon baked onion in here that is so good with a steak. All right, so this oven is set for 200. In it goes. So y'all will notice that I put those steaks on a baking rack so the bacon grease can actually drip down and our steak won't be sitting in the bacon renderings. And another thing that uh, I always like to do, and that's to sit my steaks out on the counter and bring them to room temperature. So when we come back, I'm gonna take this beautiful strip steak and uh, I'm gonna cook it and I'm gonna make y'all an open face New York strip sandwich. Hey y'all, thanks for coming back and joining me. Today's show is all about options and I'll be the first to admit, 
I get in ruts where I do the same way this all every time. But I do like playing around. And that's the fun part of savory cooking. Uh, you know, you really don't have to have a recipe. You can experiment and make all your dishes come alive in different ways. So we're kind of doing this just like backwards, y'all. Uh, we've cooked them low and slow. And then when we take them out and let them rest, you know, I told you earlier, that's the great part of cooking your steaks this way. Uh, because you can do all this earlier in the day and they can sit and rest, you know, for a few hours. So when your guests come, you're not all harried. All you have to do is take those steaks that's been resting and just throw them on the grill and heat them at the last second. This steak is our New York strip. So I'm gonna salt and pepper this. And then I'm gonna do what I used to do in the restaurant at night. I would do a mustard rubbed catfish and they were so good. And I'm using a Dijon mustard, not a regular mustard. Although I think with those catfish that I used to cook, I think that I used just a yellow mustard. I can't remember because it's been a long time. So I'm just gonna put a little coating on that and just rub that in. And then I've got my griddle behind me over here on the stove. I've got it piping hot. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands real quick like y'all. And then I'm gonna put our crustini in the oven because remember, I told you I was gonna make you an open-faced New York strip sandwich. So these should be ready about the same time. And this is just a good bread that uh, we brush with olive oil and a little salt. And we're gonna let those brown. So you can see our griddle is smoking. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our steak on. Whoa, hear that sizzle, y'all? All right, now, in a few minutes, I'm gonna take that steak and I'm gonna turn it this away so our marks on our steak looks like that bacon that I latticed. I think they're a good ways off from 120. <laughs> you know, it's really funny, y'all. Uh, a ribeye has always been mine and Michael's favorite steak, especially that cowboy ribeye that's got the long bone in it. And if Michael and I are in a restaurant off somewhere, We'll just order one of those for the two of us, and he gets the meat and I get the bone, because the bone is my very favorite part. Now you see the grill marks. Now I'm gonna turn that steak this away, and then I'm gonna have that pretty basket weave pattern on that steak. And that's the way they do it in the restaurants, if you like that kind of presentation. So we'll be right back. You know, I can't tell you right now because, you know, I've told y'all so many times, there's no, no kitchen person here. It's just me and this small little team. So we have not ever cooked this before. So I can't tell you exactly how long that those steaks are gonna take in the oven until I'm done. So I hope y'all got all afternoon to spend with me. <laughs> we'll see y'all back in a minute. The space that you live in really affects the way you feel. So my first recommendation is start by updating your window treatments with Smith & Noble. Smith & Noble's beautiful handcrafted blinds, drapes, shades, and shutters are custom made just for you. And they offer different service options to fit your needs. To get started today, contact Smith & Noble to get my special limited time offer, 25% off on your window treatments plus free design consultation. Create a space that you're gonna love. 
For details about my special offer, go to smithandnoble.com slash Paula. That's smithandnoble.com slash Paula. Or call 1-800-659-3300. That's 1-800-659-3300. This is fresh garlic, y'all, and the coarseness of that bread works as like a grater on this garlic. And you see I've almost grated down half of that clove of garlic. You know, the thing is, when you're doing your crostini, you really just want to dry them out in the oven. You really don't want to toast them. You just want them to be like dry. This steak on top of the griddle Probably took 10 minutes, 11 minutes, not long, y'all. And I really got my griddle hot, so it sizzled it just like to perfection. Michael and I eat our steak medium rare, and this is a perfect, perfect medium rare. All right, so I told you earlier, today's show is all about options. And these are some different options to how to cook your next steak. And uh, I'm cooking steak three ways. I'm fixing to make you an open-faced New York strip sandwich out of this beautiful strip right here. Let's see, I need to cut that little gristly part off. And Gus, you don't mind, do you, buddy? You don't mind, do you? Your mama's not a good aim. And I told you earlier, that I had some caramelized onions back here and some portobellas. Well, I'm gonna use our caramelized onions on our open face sandwich, and I'm just gonna put those onions right on that crostini, like that. I love caramelized onions. And to do a, a caramelized onion right, y'all, you're gonna need to give yourself probably about 45 minutes for those onions to caramelize. All right, now I'm gonna add our beef. And this is definitely a sandwich that uh, you have to eat with a knife and a fork. <laughs> Yum, look at that beautiful meat. It's incredible looking. I actually could have gotten three sandwiches out of this. All right, so next I'm gonna top it with arugula. I love, love, love arugula. It has a, a peppery taste to it, y'all. And it's just got so much flavor for it to be just a lettuce. All right, now here I've just got a horseradish sauce, just like you would eat with your prime rib. Gosh, I wish y'all were here to have some of this with me. Isn't that beautiful? Just gorgeous. You know, and I said, this is definitely a, <laughs> a knife and fork steak dinner. But you know what? I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to pick it up and eat it. <laughs> Gus just winked at me. <laughs> this is so good, y'all. I purely taste the garlic coming up out of that crostini. And the horseradish sauce and that peppery flavor from the arugula. I mean, we got our whole meal right here on this crostini. Got our meat, our vegetable, and our carbs. If you had cooked steaks the night before and you had some left over, that'd be a great way to use leftover steak. I so wish y'all were here to taste it. I'm gonna put this aside for a minute, and then when we come back, I'm gonna finish up that Asian ribeye. And remember those fillets are sitting in there in that oven on a basket weave crust of bacon. All right, y'all, welcome back. We've got these steaks to 120 degrees, and I wanna look at the clock. Y'all, it was exactly 
one hour and about four minutes that it took to get these to 120. So I've got my griddle nice and hot back here. Now this is our Asian steak. Looks beautiful. Remember we coated this with sugar and salt and pepper. So all we have to do now is just brown these off. And it's not gonna take long. Now, I was telling y'all earlier that when you get to this point, you could these could sit here for two or three hours and it would be fine. And then right before you're ready to serve your guest, then you would throw them on the griddle. All right, now while those are searing, you see this beautiful basket. I think we ought to try something. So this is what I'm gonna try. I hope that it'll stay together. <laughs> it's working! <laughs> All right, now these are not gonna take nearly as long as the other steak did because it had already cooked some. Mmm, hmm. Now I wanna show y'all a little trick that I use to figure out the temperature of my steak. If you'll make a loose fist and feel right here on the fatty part of your hand, a rare steak feels just like that. I'm gonna tighten it a little bit. That feels like a medium rare steak. I'm gonna tighten it a little bit more and that's what a medium steak feels like. Now I'm gonna make a real hard fist, and that's what a ruined, well-done steak feels like right there. All right, I got my portabellas here. These are just my filet mignons. And I'm bringing those on up and gonna sit them on my basket weed bacon. This is our Asian steak, y'all. So it's gonna go on a bed of noodles. It's kind of like a fancy ramen noodle. Uh, you add a little water and throw it in the microwave and cook. So we thought that would be real good nestled on those hot noodles. And now on these fillets, all we're gonna do is put a little, I've got a little brown butter here that we seasoned up with thyme. So every good steak needs a little butter poured on it, right? <laughs> All right, those are ready to go, along with my potato. I eat my baked potato with butter and sour cream. I love cooking Vidalia onions, and you can cook them over a, a open fire. They work great in the regular oven. So now let's finish up our other option, which is the Asian steak. We've got that sitting on our noodles. We are gonna put our portobello mushrooms on this. Whoa. <laughs> oh, look! My man just walked in the kitchen. Come on in here, Michael. You are not gonna believe it. I don't have a, I don't have a microphone, so you're gonna have to talk in mama's chest. Hey. <laughs> I'm just finishing up cooking steaks. Oh my God. Giving every, showing everybody different options. Now this steak is a Asian inspired, so I'm gonna put this wonderful sauce on it. These three steaks, Michael, I put in the oven, seasoned them. This one is coated with sugar, salt, and pepper. And these were just salt and pepper. But look, look what they're sitting on. Oh my goodness. A basket weave of bacon. <laughs> mm. And I cooked the, the Vidalia onion in the oven with the beef bouillon, a baked potato. That's delicious. Oh, you do love it? I don't know what I do with those noodles. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how you uh, put it on the grill and cook them and then let them sit right. and rest a minute? We put these in a 200 degree oven and it took one hour and four or five minutes for them to reach 100, 120. Then and then you, you, yeah, you can let them sit and rest, you know, two or three hours, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. All right, so cut into this one and tell me what you think. 
I want the onion. Oh. I don't hardly need a knife. Good. Mmm. Oh, y'all, that onion. You want to try it? Well, I can't put that big a bite. Oh, my, my. Mm. All right, so the thing about the way we cook these steaks, y'all, instead of it being kind of charred on the edge and red in the center, it's kind of the same color all the way throughout. <laughs> no, I want you to have it. Mm. Huh? Say that again. Delicious. Tell me how every, no, tell everybody how much you love me and how crazy you are about me. It is delicious. <laughs> you didn't answer my question. So thank you for sampling my Well, my, that's my job. That's right. <laughs> You're my eater. And like I said, today's show was all about options. You know, there's so many ways to do things, but we get in that rut where we do it the same way over and over. I hope that y'all will try some of these different ways to prepare a steak. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. So until next time, y'all, you know I always send you love and best dishes. Well, what do y'all think? The steak was delicious, all three ways. But the double cooking, that one got my attention. I hope that y'all will try it and let me hear from y'all. And until I hear from you, I send you love and best dishes. The space that you live in really affects the way you feel. So my first recommendation is start by updating your window treatments with Smith & Noble. Smith & Noble's beautiful handcrafted blinds, drapes, shades, and shutters are custom made just for you. And they offer different service options to fit your needs. To get started today, contact Smith & Noble to get my special limited time offer 25% off on your window treatments, plus free design consultation. Create a space that you're gonna love. For details about my special offer, go to smithandnoble.com slash Paula. That's smithandnoble.com slash Paula. Or call 1-800-659-3300. That's 1-800-659-3300.